Hey friends, welcome back to The Gentleman's Journey. Guys, in this one, we're gonna be talking about the Beckett Seminon Medina boot. Now friends, we're gonna get into this in some detail, but I thought I'd do something a little bit different and walk you guys through kind of my process when I'm shopping for a boot. So guys, we're gonna look through the website and look at things that jump out to me. We're gonna end up talking about the nuts and bolts, but I thought it'd be fun just so maybe you're looking at some more Beckett Seminons. I have the silver over here. I just wanna show you some of the details of my processes. Now friends, if you're new here, my name is Charles and this is The Gentleman's Journey. Guys, I started this channel to review products and take you guys along with me as I look at things that fit my lifestyle and just give you some of the nuts and bolts on them. The best way if you're interested in supporting my channel is to subscribe and then guys, I'm gonna put links to stuff like this as you come along the channel. It's an affiliate link, it sends you over there so by the end of the video, if it's something you determine that you're interested in, just click that link and it'll support the channel. Uh, now friends, this boot, typically what we do after we review it, we go on a little adventure and stuff. Guys, this boot actually got to me running a little small. Beckett Seminon sent me these boots out. This one's the same size. It fits me a little bit better if I wear a thin sock. So I thought it'd be fun. Rather than sending them back to the company, I got such a growing boot collection and even though I do need this boot for a few occasions, I thought, why not give back? Guys, it's almost Christmas. I figured, you know what? Let's just do a giveaway. So friends, rather than sending this boot back, I'm gonna give it away. And I think in that, we can talk about the sizing. Maybe if anything went wrong with me, maybe it was my end, and we're gonna look at their sizing instructions. But at any rate, all you gotta do is just make sure and subscribe to the channel, and then let me know why you need this boot. We're gonna give it away Christmas morning, 2023. So friends, real quickly though, before we get into kind of walking through the website and looking for how to shop for a boot, I just wanna give you the rundown. Now guys, this is a six inch full grain leather boot. I consider this a casual kind of dress boot. And friends, it has the broguing toe cap. Again, it's that black full grain leather. It has a lined uh, leather lined inner, and then it has a shank through the middle for some more support. Guys, it has a Blake stitch holding it all together. It has a rubber outsole with a leather heel stack, it has a little pull tab. These are some of the nuts and bolts, guys. But we're gonna go through it in much greater detail. I'm sure a lot of that information meant a much to a lot of you guys, and then some are already lost. So for those of us who are lost, let's hang back and let's get into this boot and see what I'm looking for when I go out shopping for a boot. So let's make our way over to the website. Now friends, obviously it's in their best interest to sell the boot. So they gotta come up with basically a concise statement that's gonna get you guys as much information as you need to either make a purchase or to look at it a bit further. I think I found that little statement here on these boots website. So let's look at it real quick. I'm gonna read it to you guys. It starts out with stunning detail and superior styling. So that's the headline. How do you design and build stunning lace up like these Medina boots? Start with the concept behind a work boot, refine the profile, choose only the best full grain leather, add stunning broguing on the toe cap and heel counter, use solid brass grommets to reinforce the eyelets and speed hooks to make tying easy, finish it off with an elegant, sturdy sole and heel stack. Then you have a boot ready to wear straight out of the box with jeans, chinos, casual pants, and some suits. Boots you will wear for a very long time. Now friends, we're gonna talk about that. I have the boots right here in my hands, so we're gonna identify if all that stuff's true. We're gonna try to pull out what's going on in there for maybe the guy that's not a boot reviewer, that just wants a nice set of boots for the office. Maybe you're doing a wedding and you want a nice boot that you'll wear every, uh, every so often, or maybe you're gonna be running this thing daily, and you're trying to figure out if this is gonna suit your needs. Uh, so you can scroll back up to the top of the page and start looking at the boot, and you'll see the pictures of what I'm having. And I gotta be honest with you, friends, I'm sure the camera does different things, but the color and all that came across pretty similar. I gotta tell you that there's often times where the color looks a little off. Of course, we can change up the color here, the Bordeaux, the oak, uh, we got tan, but we're gonna go back to the black and scroll down and look at that statement. So how do you design a boot like this? They start with 
a work boot. So I think we could all agree that in some aspects, you can see a refined profile work boot in this. Choose the best full grain leather. Now we're gonna have to get into some of their details on that to see if that's so, but luckily for us, they have that right underneath this statement. It says this product is made from full grain calf's, calfskin leather sourced from a gold uh, rated tannery based in something something Italy, being the highest level of recognition awarded by the Leather Working Group. A gold rating signifies the leather manufacturer meets the most stringent criteria and demonstrates a strong commitment to mitigation to environmental impacts. So friends, obviously you're gonna to have to go even deeper if you wanna look up this gold rated. Now we got an idea of where the tanneries out of. You got an idea of what type of leather, just for points for you guys to go a little bit deeper. You can get into like, hey, what is full grain calfskin? What's, what's full grain? What's uh, all these different types of leathers out there? So that's a place where you guys can grow a little, go a little deeper. So we won't go there in this video, but you keep reading it. It says you add stunning broguing to the toe cap and heel counter. So along the way, we're gonna be learning some terms, of course. I think any guy could imagine what the toe cap is and you see the broguing. So now you ask your friends, you're sitting around the office, got your feet kicked up and you know, someone says, what's that? Why do you have that cool design on your, on the front of your boot? You know, I'm trying to think about what language they would use. You'd be like, well, you know what? That's broguing. So now you got a term and that's on the toe cap. So now you got another term. So this is how you get moving and grooving in the boot world. Start learning these terms. Uh, so that's a toe cap. Something we might not know right from that is whether the actual leather of the toe comes underneath and that's a toe cap put on or not. So we don't have that information yet. We'll see if we get that uh, as we scroll through. If I forget to mention it later, ask me in the comments and we'll try to get to that stuff. Uh, but that's something you could research. Some people don't care. You know what? I don't care if that's stitched on or if it's an actual toe cap. If you're a hardworking man out in the construction fields or something, you're gonna want an actual toe cap because you're on your knees and you're scuffing that up and you're gonna want an actual piece of leather put on the top. So that might be more important to you than if you're just running it as a dress boot. Then it says it has broguing on the heel counter. Well, everybody knows where their heel is. So you start thinking, all right, that's probably the heel counter. So now you're starting to learn more terms. Heel counter, toe cap, but then it continues on. It says that they use solid brass grommets to reinforce the eyelids. Now that's something that's really interesting to me because, you know, depending on the type of metal that you have, it might oxidize, it might do different things. It might be thinner, it might be cheaper. Uh, and it's most likely generally a tin coated with like brass paint or something. So what they're saying is that these are solid brass grommets. So when you start thinking about the products that they use, we already know that they're sourcing good leather. They're sourcing good eyelets. Uh, so you can imagine that's something that's not gonna be falling apart right away. So the next thing is the, it's finishing off with the uh, sturdy sole and heel stack. Not a lot of details there, but as you look, you're thinking that's a leather heel stack. Now be careful. If you check back my boot collection, 21, 22 probably, you'll see these boots. My original boot that got me into the gentleman's journey it's a mall boot is what I call it. I picked it up at the mall and it's a rubber heel with a thin, thin layer of leather glued to the heel. Sometimes friends, I think we go to more trouble trying to imitate stuff, it seems like to me, than if they would have just put leather in there. But at any rate, you gotta watch some of these companies, man, because you might not be getting the real deal. That might look leather, but it's actually rubber underneath. Guys, this is a rubber heel stack. This is a leather heel stack, but again, you might not learn that from that original little rundown. Uh, but then it has the rubber outsole. So again, we're gonna get into some of the, my thoughts and pros and cons as we go through it. Uh, and just honing in on this, I think it's gonna be really grippy, plenty grippy, but it's just kind of anticlimactic for me. It just doesn't do a lot with the rubber outsole. The top end, of course, you don't see that much and it doesn't matter to most guys, but the top end is absolutely stunning. It really is a good looking boot. Uh, tight stitching everywhere around. You know, they got double stitching in all the right places. 
Again, I'm supposed to be showing you guys what we can learn just from the computer, but we're gonna walk through a little bit. With the Blake stitch, you know, you, this is something that can be resold. I'm gonna scroll to the top and let's look at it again. So obviously they're giving you a bunch of photos and that's what you're looking for. You can scroll through and look at the colors. Um, but let's check out right here. Let's, let's just stay towards the top and look at the product details and then the sizing. So we already talked about the colors. A snapshot says you got the 7 US to a 14 US. Uh, and then you can go ahead to this find your size. So friends, before we get into this, I'm just gonna tell you, I'm right out of 12 on a Brannock device. I wear 11 and a half in most of my boots. That's pretty much across the board. I do have, what do I have? Uh, I got 11 occasionally. I got a 12 occasionally. Uh, but most times I'm right at 11 and a half. So find your Beckett Simonon size, start now. Again, these ended up being 11 for me. So what's my size? Do you know your Brannock size? I said, do you, it's a 12, so I'm gonna say that a 12. What size do you wear most in dress shoe brands? Allen Edmonds and Murphy, Colhan, I don't have any of those, uh, so I can't relate to that, but I'm gonna to default to my boot size, which is 11.5. What's my size? What size do you wear the most in sneakers? That's a 12 for me. All right, what's the most common shoe size in your closet today? That's 11.5 for me. How would you describe your, sh your uh, foot shape? Very narrow, somewhat standard width, somewhat wide or very wide. I think across the board on a Brannock device, I think I was a uh, C width, I think is, is pretty standard. So I'm gonna go with standard. All done, your Beckett Simonon size is 12. Still have doubts, no problem. Uh, you can return it and ha they have a great return process. So friends, I was on the back end. I'm not sure what happened. I, I, I would have to dig through emails communicating with them, uh, but I got sent a size 11. So again, if I were a thin dress sock, I would be good to go. That's the thing. I just wanna, I wanted to show you that because that's real life. I would be good to go. I would wear these, but I really truly wanna do just a giveaway. Uh, so I think that'd be fun. I, I wear these, I've, I honestly wear these and I do just fine. I love these boots. I got several Chelsea boots. These are gonna end up in a comparison video soon, so be sure to, Look out for those. If you haven't, check out the original Silva video. It's a good one. We had some fun. Uh, so honestly, I get these on and they, they look really sharp. I mean, I'm, I'm a preacher guy, so I wouldn't mind preaching, doing some weddings in these, but it put me out of 12 and they sent me 11. I can tell you right now, 11 and a half would be perfect. Uh, it would just give me a little bit of room everywhere. And then I could wear, I wear a lot of Hanes and Walmart socks or whatever and I'd feel comfortable. Uh, let me know if I can answer any questions for y'all with the sizing, but that's kind of that. On the other side here, it gives us the product details. So the product details is really what you guys want when you come for a review. And we'll see if there's anything that jumps out to me that I can be talking about for you guys. So the first one, the, pr uh, the full grain leather upper is supple, durable, and would develop a perfect, uh, a beautiful patina. And so, you know, it really is supple. They condition it right out of the gate. Uh, full grain leather is what you're looking for. It doesn't give you the thickness. Again, it has a lining. So if, if you consider the lining and the outer leather, it does feel a little bit thicker, but it's a really thin leather. And that's because it's not a work boot. We do, I would say arguably mostly work boots on this channel and a lot of run and gun casual boots. You're not, you don't really, you're not looking for a thick leather in these dress boots. So the round toe box presents a relaxed, rugged look and a generous depth for comfort. That's an area, even with the sizing, that I already felt like the toe box was very comfortable. Again, I, I could wear these with no dramas. And I really, I, there's so many different toe profiles. And again, they don't have a, a, a lot of details on there, but just, it, it, it kind of shows when you look at the pictures, it is a relaxed kind of toe box there. All right, it says, the leather lined insoles adapt to your feet's shape to form custom like footbeds. So that's why we go to higher brand uh, shoes. That's why we're getting away from all the silly memory foam stuff is you really want a footbed. There's nothing like a set of Iron Rangers by Red Wing or something like that where you have this awesome footbed in there. 
that's going to start molding to your feet. So that's, again, in, t in terms of terms, that's the footbed. That's, you have sometimes a liner that comes on top of the footbed, a removable insole that can come out. A lot of companies do that. This one's, uh, let's see, let me just double check. Yeah, this one's glued in, so it's not coming out. Again, if you wanted to go a little bit bigger with your boot, then that gives you the flexibility to put an insole in there, maybe add some more arch. You can get your Dr. Scholl's little arch support thing going on. Uh, but if you go too small, like this is for me, there's really not much for you to do. I haven't found too many guys that think stretching boots is worthwhile at any rate. Maybe if you had a lot of money into the boots and you couldn't return them, yeah, you bet I'd probably try some stretching. But yeah, it says the Fachetta leather lining manages temperatures, absorbs sweat, and controls odors. Uh, so that's the leather lining that they're talking about here is going to help with that. I I haven't personally found my feet to be incredibly sweaty. If you're a guy that has, you know, you got to take precautions, maybe have a second set of boots in the middle of the day, you might want to change out or change your socks or have some way to take your take your boots off. But I wear boots every single day of my life and I just, I don't have that problem. Uh, so I might not be the best guy to answer that, but they say it's going to take out some of that sweat and whatnot. Continues on, a steel shank is riveted to the insole and outsole for added balance and support. So you might be taking these off, obviously, as you're running through the airport, but a steel shank going through there, and that's going to be adding that support for you. You'll still have a little bit of toe spring, obviously, but they say that they riveted it in there. So I would, we might have to get someone to cut these in half, man. I'd love to see what that looks like. The Blake stitching ensures the shoes are sturdy and resolable with minimal break-in. So we won't go through a big debate on the welt and whether Blake Stitch or Goodyear or Stitch Down, all these different types of welts are good, but I can guarantee you one thing, friends. If you're at this range boot and you're getting a Blake Stitch boot, you're getting a really good boot. So honestly, if you're wearing these to work and back and casual use, you get through some puddles and stuff, man, you're not gonna get anything in there. And again, these are resolable. It's all leather. You'll see on like my Thorough Goods, it has, I think a Blake stitch, but a little piece of rub rubber in there. And a lot of guys don't like that. So everything is gonna be leather in there. That's something that guys look for though, is you're looking for boots and you're thinking about what kind of boot I want. You know, is it resolable is a huge thing. Is it gonna last a long time? Is it something you can be a good steward of? We talk a lot about that on the channel here. Uh, but he continues on the stacked leather heel looks fantastic and are easy to repair. So that's where we get that bit of information. It's a stacked leather heel. The SBR rubber heel caps provide traction, durability, and shock absorption. I don't know if you're gonna be jumping around and bouncing a lot, uh, but you got your traction, you got your shock absorption. Hard finished with carbonara wax and shea butter for natural luster and deep color. I gotta tell you friends, I really am stunned when these boots come out. I think that's maybe the word of the day that they really do finish well and they send them with these they come in a little bag so let me show you how they come so many companies you know spend all this money making these boots and then sometimes they arrive to you all scuffed up and you know I, I get a lot of work boots so it's kind of like ah, whatever it's a work boot but then again it's like man aren't you proud of your stuff aren't you don't you want the guy who gets those boots to just be in awe of your product so they have these little boot bags here uh, and whoever's getting these boots you know you'll have yourself a nice little way to carry them and it's just a really nice little bag and so these came from Columbia and they came all the way to me and they're looking really good so they obviously had a little bit of padding down in there if you haven't be sure to head over and watch my shoe tree video it's the boot trees uh, guys, there's so many different brands. I'm going to drop a link to some below. These are a set of boots. I'd love to see some boot trees in. We go back to that whole sweaty feet thing. That's, that's one thing you can do that I can comment on. If you got sweaty feet, you're going to make sure that you got some boot trees in here. Because rather than the boots and that lining absorbing all that moisture at the end of the day, that's what your boot trees can do. Uh, and they're going to hold that shape. And these boots, to me, there's some debate on that. These boots are worth boot trees in my estimation. 
Then it says it's handcrafted by master artisans under responsible and ethical working conditions. If you look at my Beckett Simonon Silva review, I go into a lot of that and you know we'll see some more of that on the website today. But that's something that they're super proud of. And that's going to be obviously something that guys are factoring in these days. Uh, what are the working conditions? What's the like over at the factory? So uh, while we're at the top here, it says tradition... Tradition retail is 400, made to order is 259. So that's what you're looking at. Then they have an option if you wanna, you know, set up payments and go 230 a month. Just on that, friends, I'd say, you know, on average, if if you can't afford it, just don't buy it. That's that's my life lesson for y'all. Uh, we we might go deeper on that in a in a future video, but I have a lot to say about finances. Uh, I teach it on some level and I live it, and I just don't like debt. So I don't think that's good stewardship. Scripture says that the borrower is slave to the lender, and I don't know. I, I, you'd be hard-pressed to convince me that you need to finance out a pair of Beckett Seminon boots. Uh, so details don't only matter, they're everything. I'm going to speed through these really quickly. Full-grain leather, highly breathable, flexible, durable, full-grain calfskin leather holds... It's structure and will conform to the shape of your feet. Condition of shea butter. We already read a lot of that. It goes into more of the lining here. The rubber outsole. Uh, shoe styles. Blended with other materials. Recycled rubber. You're going to hear a lot of that sustainability and recycled rubber stuff over here on Beckett Simonon. Uh, SBR rubber heel caps. Abrasion resistant SBR rubber heel caps. Gives you extra traction, support, resilience. Uh, attached with serrated brass tacks for extra reinforcement. See, that's a good example of what we're going to learn along the way. And as I prepare my videos, looking for this stuff to point out. So these are basically that cattail type of, type of nail that'll go in but won't come out. So they got three here, three there, and then three in the back. And of course, they're going to glue that heel as well. Then they're going to send it through their buffers. And most of these companies have several stages of buffing out that edge in this company says there's at least 150 unique processes to these boots and if we haven't covered it or you haven't seen on the screen yet of course these are handmade and that's why they go into some great detail into talking about their employers employees and how they're treated the working conditions a little bit of where they live and a little bit of that information and it's really something to see a handcrafted boot you know as much as it might look like it's dying off, I actually think it's growing because that's what guys like you and me are looking for. And then it finishes off with the waxed cotton laces. So you got a video down here you can go into. And then it goes into handcrafted with integrity. So it's going to talk about the workshop. I think a lot of this stuff is really neat. Uh, founded in Bogota, Colombia, 1945. So again, you're, all the questions sometimes you guys are looking for is right here on the website, uh, but it's a matter of checking out those first couple photos, checking out that first statement, and seeing if you even want to go any further. Because I would say, you know what, the company can have all the bolts and nuts, it can treat their employees the best, the gold star leather, but if it's if it's just an ugly boot and it doesn't do anything for you, why, why waste your time going any further? Uh, that's not to say that maybe you go back to the main screen and see if Beckett Simonon doesn't have another boot that does something for you. I'm sure that if you're watching this, the guy that wants this wouldn't want that maybe. So there's a whole different group of guys and most of these companies are catering to the whole crowd of them. But again, founded in Columbia in 1945, 137 employees, both men and women, a 45 hour work week, freedom to form unions, paid time off, and it goes all of that. And then you can meet a lot of their artisans. You can look at some of the details. The shipping, free returns, 30 day money back guarantee. Again, with the sizing and stuff, friends, you're free to go through there and figure out if that what I had to say gives you guys any help or not. You can go through their little step process. They would have put me in a 12. I would have probably been more happy in a 11.5. So. Uh, do with that what you will and then from that you can go in and read some of the reviews as you scroll down here it's going to talk about 
some of the people will talk about how they fit or how they didn't fit as well. So hopefully that's a really good rundown of me looking through their website with you guys. Uh, real quickly, some of my thoughts, lined or online usually aren't a big deal to me. You'll find a lot of companies these days that aren't lining their boots and I'm okay with that. Thursday Boot Company obviously does, a lot of Red Wing boots don't. Uh, I'm still getting into, I haven't got Grant and Stone and all that, so there's so many places that I need to go. Of course, the Alden boots, uh, everybody's gonna vary. I just haven't, it's not something personally that I look for. I do really love the speed hooks up the top. That's a minor detail, but sometimes they put an eyelet at the top and that's just kind of annoying. I think it's impractical if you're using the speed hooks, why are you gonna, but again, that's you might disagree with me completely. I think the broguing is really special. They have boots that don't have the broguing. They got toe caps without the broguing. Uh, I think it just sets you apart. I mean, how many guys in your office or in your space have the broguing? I think sometimes it sets you apart. Uh, they got a bunch of different color options on this boot so you can match it to a bunch of different outfits that you guys have. The outsole, I won't get to know how this performs. Whoever wins this boot will have to let me know. Maybe I should make that a caveat. You have to let me know in six months how the boot's doing. No, you don't have to let me know, but uh, honestly, I'm really stoked about the leather. It came more, present, more clean and more presentable than most any boots I've had to date. I've even had like $600 boots that come scuffed up and that's, that gets kind of irritating. Uh, I'd love to answer any questions. Is there something I missed in the process that you're like, well, what are you looking for there? You know, it doesn't talk a lot about the arch profile. Uh, there's some things that they don't get into there. We don't know a lot about the midsole. We don't know if it's all leather in there, if there's any non, obviously the the uh, outsole is rubber, so through the midsole, is there anything in there that's not leather? Stuff like that you can still grow deeper with. Uh, the company overall, you know, they get the boots to you really quick. They're over in Bogota, Colombia. Uh, great set of people from what I can see. Easy to work with on the back end. Uh, they would have been more than happy to take these and get me the right size and rush them out to me. Uh, but I thought it'd be fun to donate them to somebody. Uh, you know what, guys, at this point, I think we're going to call it. And again, just let me know in the, in the comments if you guys have any thoughts on these boots. I, I get to each and every comment. Uh, friends, until the next video, God bless. And hey, don't forget to give these boots some love from time to time.